I'd like to say to all of the young innovators, Black Lives Matter. could nonviolent action be used against ISIS? You Even can the be a of part of, of the biggest ISIS scientific discoveries of our time. Dorothy Gale. Dorothy Gale is a young girl who lives on a farm in the vast, gray, dry, dusty Kansas landscape. You may have heard of her. She's the one who lives with her Aunt Em and Uncle Henry, and living and working on this farm day in and day out. This is Dorothy's world. But then one day, something crazy happens to Dorothy. A huge tornado roared onto her farm, and it picked up her house off of its foundation and tossed it into the air, with Dorothy inside of it. Dorothy happened to fall asleep during this, uh, but when she woke up, she walked over to the front door and she opened it. She stepped down to, out onto something yellow, and she looked around and realized that she was no longer in gray Kansas anymore. She was, in fact, in the most beautiful, colorful landscape that she had ever seen. So how does Dorothy actually cope with this? Um, some of us might recall that at first she's bewildered, but she also just wants to get the hell out. Um, Dorothy wants to go home and be with Aunt Em and Uncle Henry again. But as Dorothy travels along this yellow brick road in a pair of brand new shoes, uh, she begins to make friends, lifelong friends. She also helps solve socio-political issues while she's in Oz. <laughs> and she does all of this without ever forgetting her roots, where she came from, the people who loved her most and, and, most and, the, and the tools that they taught her. Dorothy's life in Oz was now the foundation that she was building upon. I am fascinated by this very idea. My artwork is about the ways in which our formative experiences, such as surviving a, a tornado or going to a new country for the first time, or experiencing the death of a loved one, continue to impact our daily lives, which can include our behaviors, our health, and the way we perceive and interact with the world. Now, my approach is to take stories from my childhood and make art out of them. And so I build, and I paint, and I draw, and I perform works of art that try to explain why it is I'm feeling the way that I'm feeling about a situation, and when in my lifetime I may have learned to feel this way, and how society prefers I do or do not share these emotions with you, the outside world. And so I feel a kinship with Dorothy, and I have for some time. Now, over the years, my mom saved for me uh, toys and photographs, and I'm particularly drawn to, surprise, surprise, the ones that remind me of my love for the movie The Wizard of Oz. And so I look at these Polaroid images and these toys, and I pull iconography from them, which might include ruby shoes, yellow bricks, um, blue and white gingham patterns, and I infuse them into the artwork in an effort to share my thoughts and emotions with the viewer. Now, the first time that Dorothy tries to leave Oz, she's told that she needs a pair of magical shoes. In fact, it's the shoes she's been wearing this entire time. Some of us might recall a beautiful image of Judy Garland standing in a pair of ruby slippers, such as you see right now, and chanting the words, there's no place like home. For me, in this instant, though, it's the moment when Dorothy realizes she has both the tools she needs and the experience necessary to achieve her goal, which was to go home, that continues to influence me. So now I'd like to share a short story of my own with you. Just over a year ago, my mom passed away. It was unexpected, and when we left the hospital, I had on my person a backpack full of the clothes that she wore to the hospital before she passed away, which included a pair of purple Croc shoes. Now, just not long after this, I decided that what I wanted to do was transform this humble pair of sandals, Croc shoes, into a pair of shoes that looked worthy of delivering my mom to heaven, or home, as she thought of it. And so, over the course of three months, I applied one piece of glitter at a time to this pair of shoes until they looked worthy of the part. When I was finished, I placed the shoes on a children's wagon alongside some yellow bricks and some fabric swatches that I had cut out of the clothes that my mom had worn right before she died. And my husband drove us to the property where I grew up that mom, dad, and I called 
home for 19 years. And I pulled this wagon around the property in an outfit inspired by Dorothy Gale. And I began to take those fabric swatches and form them into poppy flowers, and I placed them around my person in the grass alongside of me. I then picked up my mom's ruby slippers, I placed them over my heart, and I laid down and took solace in the moment. This ritual took place just a few months after my mom died. And at its core, it was my attempt to feel spiritually and physically surrounded by my mom again. And so, part of this ritual was indeed filmed, which is what you're seeing right now. And then it was later exhibited in a gallery, in a show called Give Pause for Thought, which was a call to action for the viewer. And the film was exhibited with yellow bricks, which signified my mom's memories, her ruby shoes, and some living materials, which included native Oregon bleeding hearts, grasses, um, fragrant-smelling sweet alyssum and lobelia flowers. And it was all brought together to share with the viewer the notion that the transition from life to death these plants were allowed to die over the course of four weeks. And this gesture, for me, further illustrated that my mom is no longer here on this earth, tending to her own yellow brick road of memories. So what do I mean by that? We each present a face to the outside world that is but the tip of the iceberg. And we're each influenced by our past in subtle or more obvious ways. With each new challenge, in memory, we place an individual yellow brick in our yellow brick roads. And this constant work of becoming and evolving and building as human beings requires us to learn new tools for coping. Because when we don't have these tools for coping, we can fall prey and victim to our own unhealthy behaviors. And sadly, this is something that happened to both of my parents. And so switching gears for just a moment, wheelbarrows, what about them? There's a bunch of them. So wheelbarrows in my work then signify the hard work that it takes for each of us to build and maintain our yellow brick roads as we pave our ways through life. In this exhibition, in this instance, there were two wheelbarrows. This is Give Pause for Thought. One is small, one is large. One has yellow bricks in it, one has grass in it. So knowing the context of this artwork, you might be thinking, well, maybe it's a mother-daughter portrait. Maybe it's the combined efforts of family members to help a struggling loved one. For me, the artwork is always open to interpretation. But it was in this moment, in this instance, that I realized that wheelbarrows don't just signify hard work. They began to personify my individual family members. And so this TEDx installation, in fact, is a family portrait of sorts. The wheelbarrows that you see are painted with colors that are inspired by flannel coats that my mom, dad, and I wore while we did chores together out on the farm. And I'd like to take a moment to tell you that even though my parents didn't always have the tools or the coping skills that they needed, they were two of the most wonderful, loving, hardworking people I've ever met. And it's because of their efforts that I got to grow up and that we lived on a beautiful farm in rural Oregon. It's because of their conviction and guidance that I was able to develop the tools that I needed to leave the farm, like Dorothy, and explore the world in my own unique way. Now, before I left, Mom and Dad taught me to love big and think first and fight hard for what you believe in. They taught me that all of the hard work, all of the blood poured, the tears shed, the first tries, the second tries, the failures, the successes, all the do-overs that none of us ever want to tell anybody about. All of this hard work and effort is worth it because it leads us to these aha moments when the way we perceive and interact with the world is forever changed. They lead us to those moments when we open the door with Kansas at our back and Oz in front of us. These are just a few ways in which my childhood continues to influence my adult life. But truly, for each of us, 
the tools that we were given as kids continue to influence or impact the choices we make as adults. And the choices we make as adults, they affect our relationships. They affect our families, our communities, our national and international politics, and future generations. Working hard and meeting challenges with an open mind and actively improving ourselves, these are ways in which we can improve our world. And so this installation that you see, this TEDx installation, symbolizes the ruptures that can take place in our daily lives from which we have the opportunity to learn, grow, and move forward with new tools in hand. It pays homage to our complex emotions and resoluteness as fellow human beings to create revolutions within our personal lives that then echo and create the foundation for revolutions within our families, our communities, and beyond. Thank you.